Hi, this is Phil from PDQ Merchant Enterprises and ATMS Man Group page. And in today's video, we'll be talking about the top five things you should know before you get a Vaulter for your ATM. Always remember here at PDQ Merch Enterprises and the ATM Mastermind Group page, we buy your freedom back one transaction at a time. Don't forget to join the ATM Mastermind Group page. It's free to join for like-minded individuals just like yourself who want to learn a little bit more about the ATM business and be in a like-minded community of other ATM business owners. We also have the ATM A to Z book that teaches you from A to Z how to be successful in the ATM business. I took over 20 years of experience. I put it in all this nice little sleek little book. I put me in the back cover. So if you miss me on the back, here I am on the front. So we also have the ATM A to Z course that teaches you from A to Z how to be successful in the ATM business. In our document vault, we have service agreements. We have mobile ATM agreements. We have location agreements and we also have Vaulter agreements. So if you want to do what this video is going to talk about, you will need the ATM A to Z program. And without further ado, we're going to talk about the top five things you should know when you get an ATM Vaulter and what to expect. Point number one, clearly define what the Vaulter's role is and what the responsibilities are. You know what? So many times you just expect, hey, what they're going to do is they're going to put the money in and they're going to take care of the old ATM. And then you get into the situation and you know what? They don't do anything. All they do is they put the money in. They get a service call, they don't respond. They don't check the paper, they get a jam, they don't do anything, just put the money in. And they only go to the location when the money is out. So that doesn't work. You get a service call, now you're not there, you're in another state, the location's calling you and saying, hey, my ATM's down. You call the vault and vault says, well, hey, that's not part of our agreement. I'm not gonna do that. You got a software upgrade. Walter says, well, I'm not gonna do that. You got a card reader that goes down. Walter says, hey, I'm not gonna do that. So clearly define what you need that Walter to do. Is it a total uh, service agreement where they're gonna handle the service, the paper, the jams, the bill jams, replacement of parts? And if they're not, what does that look like? And if they are, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna pay them to do that extra little? Who's responsible for the parts? You gotta de clearly define all and all those things like that so you know. What if you have a communication problem? Who's going to respond to that? Is the vaulter? Is that your responsibility? And what's the timely fashion? So you got to clearly define their role in your business because they're representing you, the ATM owner, and you got to make sure that they do a good enough job as you would do so you don't look bad in front of your customer. So number one, clearly define what their roles are. Point number two, set a minimum threshold that the ATM's always got to be at. So therefore, if the ATM starts getting low, you get an alert on your phone. It says, hey, the ATM is low and then it runs out of money. We set up a location with the Vaulter. And what happened is that Vaulter, what they did is they just put in $500 at a time. They put in $500 on Monday. The thing ran out Monday night. They, didn't, they weren't going back until Friday. They went twice a week, Mondays and Fridays, and it, the ATM sat down. So when I started looking at the journals, I figured out, you know what? They're only putting in $500. Then they, then they told me, oh, no. That doesn't work, Phil. We're putting in thousands of dollars. I'm like, well, when I look at what you're putting in, it's $500. I can see what's coming out. It's $500. The ATM sits down for two, sometimes three days, and you don't you don't put enough money in. So that was a problem for us. We didn't do a lot of transactions. It was a nightmare. So from my lesson, what I'm giving it to you is set a minimum threshold. They have to put in $2,000 at a time. They have to put in $3,000 at a time. Set the minimum and what you expect. And when it hits that, $200 or $100 threshold, they're out there immediately putting that money back in because if that money, if the ATM is down because they don't put money in, you don't make any money, location's pissed, and you know what? You want to avoid the whole thing. So what you do is in your agreement, set minimum thresholds or set what you expect them to fill the ATM to at all times. Point number three, response time for service calls. How long are they going to respond? Is it going to be in an hour? Is it four hours? Is it same day? Is it next day? Is it two days? What is the level of response? So when the store owner calls you or they call, and that's another thing, are they going to call you or are they going to call that falter? So figure out who's going to take the service calls. And then from there, you got to know what's the response time. Hey, Mr. Owner, our response time is in four, an hour. Our response time is in four hours. Our response time is next day. So therefore you set the expectation in the beginning. And then what you do is you convey that to the vaulter and make sure they abide by that. And if they don't, then there's penalties involved in that. You gotta set that up in your agreement. 
Point number four, how much am I willing to pay a transaction? A lot of people are saying, hey, if I pay 10 cents a transaction, is that enough? Or if I pay a percentage of what the vault cash is, is that enough? You know what? At the end of the day, you got to make a decision of how much you're going to pay. Standard right now in the industry is somewhere in between 70 cents and a dollar 25. It all depends on volume and how many transactions that location is going to do in a given amount of time. So you got to know that going in that, hey, I'm willing to pay this. And that person who's vaulting it for you, hey, they got to make money too, because then it's not worth their time. So what you got to be thinking of is how many transactions I'm going to do, how much am I going to pay, and is it worth it? So just make sure you have that mapped out before you make the decision to enter in an agreement with a vaulter. And point number five, and this one's a big one, is what happens if my location builds a relationship with my owner? So now, you know what? You find a location. What does that mean, Phil? So here's what it means. You find a location, you get the location agreement signed. You go and you hire a vaulter and the vaulter is servicing that. You visit the location and install and then you never go there again. Now what happens is that vaulter is building a relationship month after month, day after day, year after year, service calls, communication errors, running out of money. They're there when they build the money into the ATM. And now you know what, they're building that relationship. And then what happens is the store owner says, you know what, let's call him Sam. Sam, I like you. Hey, my buddy, he needs a location. He's got a store, he's opening up. And now what does he do? Is Sam gonna, is is that guy gonna call you and say, hey, this store has got another location over here across town. What are we gonna do? And then you're like, oh, I'll put one in and you vault it. Okay, that would be the proper thing to do. But oftentimes what happened is that guy would say, oh, no problem, I'll put my ATM, cuts you out of the deal. And now, you know what? It's a new deal, but you're out. So. You should address that in, an, in, in a location agreement, put those stipulations. Hey, if we get a lead, those leads become mine. I'll pay you for the lead or something like that. However you want to negotiate, but just keep in mind that could happen. And you're throwing away that relationship that you started out and built. And now that, that vaulter is taking the, that relationship. So just keep that in mind. When you get that vaulter, lay that out in agreement, put that in there in case things happen of that nature. So you're aware, hey, you know what? I'm kind of vulnerable here to have a vaulter vaulting this location. I'm always thinking future and some of those things will happen and I hope these things help. So don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel down below, comment and share with any and all your friends that you guys like this channel. And you know what? Thank you guys for making this channel number one in our space. Also, don't forget we have the A to Z course that teaches you from A to Z how to be successful in this business. And don't forget PDQ Merchant Enterprises, we sell ATMs, we process transactions and we sell parts. So we can help you in your ATM journey. And don't forget, I will see you over at the ATM Mastermind Group page.